Hello and welcome to our lesson on properties of exponents. This is going to be from section R.7 in our text. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some formulas for several properties of exponents and then we're going to jump into the examples. So the first property that we want to look at involves multiplication of variables. If you're multiplying letters that are the same and they have exponents, what you can do is you can write that as a single variable and add the powers. So x to the a times x to the b would simplify to x to the a plus b. Next, if you're dividing variables with exponents, if multiplication makes addition, then a fraction makes subtraction. So we can say that x to the a divided by x to the b will simplify to x to the a minus b. Next property, if you have a variable with an exponent that is raised to another power, this would be a power raised to a power. In this case, you would multiply the exponents. So we can say x to the a raised to the b would simplify to x to the a times b. Next property, if you have a variable raised to a negative power, it turns out that it is not good math etiquette to leave negative exponents. So the way that you can make that positive is by doing the reciprocal. So x to the negative a can simplify to 1 over x to the a. And just for fun, I'm going to throw in one more property that everybody needs to know. And that is anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So x to the 0, a to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, provided that that number is not 0 because 0 to the 0 is actually undefined. But anything else to the 0 power is 1. And at this point, we've covered all of the properties that we need to know in order to simplify these algebraic expressions. Let's go to the examples. Our first example, number 13, here we have two monomials being multiplied, 14m squared n cubed, times negative 2m cubed n squared. Now, each one of these terms has three factors. We have a coefficient and two variables. And so since we're multiplying, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the coefficients. And then for the variables that match, we're going to add their powers. So we're going to be using this property right here. So we start with 14 times negative 2 gives us negative 28. m squared times m cubed would give me m to the 2 plus 3, which is 5. n cubed times n squared would be n to the 3 plus 2, which is n to the 5th. And then this would be written in simplest form. Next example, number 37. Here we have a rational expression. Rational means fractional. That involves coefficients and variables with exponents. And the instructions say simplify. So when you're simplifying a rational expression, where the numerator and the denominator are made up of monomials, uh, the very first thing that you want to do, if you have any negative exponents, is you want to make them positive. Okay, so the way I like to say it, negative exponents are not happy. They want to be positive. So if this x to the negative 3 is unhappy in the bottom, what he wants to do is move to the top and that'll make him happy. In other words, positive. So the negative 24 stays in the numerator. The x to the negative 3 comes to the top, and that makes him positive. And then we have the x to the 6th, 
y to the seventh all over. In the denominator, we have 18. This guy moved up, so he's not there. y to the ninth. Now, once you've made all the exponents happy, that means positive, then you're going to use the properties of exponents based on how the variables are situated. And the very first thing I want to do here is I want to take care of these coefficients. So negative 24 over 18, uh, 6 goes into both of those. So that will reduce to negative 4 over 3. And then notice that the x's are multiplied in the numerator. So the property says if you multiply letters, you add their powers. That's going to give me x to the ninth in the numerator. And then y to the seventh over y to the ninth. Now there's two ways you can tackle this. You can either use the formula, which says that that's going to be y to the seventh minus nine. And that y would be in the numerator. However, that's going to give me a negative exponent, which I would then need to fix. So the other way to take care of this when you've got y's top and bottom is you can simply ask yourself two questions. Question number one, which has more y's, the top or the bottom? Well, the bottom has more. And then the next question is, how many more? So we do 9 minus 7. That's going to give us a 2. And notice the y's are going to be in the bottom. So that way you can simplify the y variables and end up with a positive exponent, which is what you really need to end up with. Remember I said it's bad math etiquette to leave variables with negative powers. And then that would be it. That is the rational expression simplified completely. And the last example we're going to look at in this lesson is number 57. Here we have a little bit of everything. We have variables with negative exponents, division with variables, and we have variables raised to other powers. So if I'm going to tackle this and try to simplify completely, According to the order of operations, I need to work from the inside out. We need to simplify inside the parentheses first, and then we can deal with the negative 5 exponent outside. Now, the first thing I notice is I do have variables with negative powers. They're not happy, and so I need to make them positive. So the b to the minus 3 wants to go to the bottom. And the b to the minus 2 wants to go to the top. Please understand that moving these negative exponents up and down only works with multiplication. In other words, the b to the negative 3 and the b to the negative 2, they have to be factors of the numerator and the denominator. And the numerator and the denominator can be only one term. All right, so that's going to simplify to 125 a to the second, b squared. That's from this b to the minus 2 coming up, all over 5, a to the fourth, b to the third. And that's from this guy moving down. All of that to the negative fifth power. Then, once I get all of the exponents inside the parentheses positive, I can reduce. We're going to reduce. 125 over 5, a squared over a to the fourth, and b squared over b cubed. We're going to reduce all three of those factors. 125 divided by 5 is 25. That'll be in the numerator because the 125 is larger. And then which has more a's, top or bottom? Well, the bottom does. How many more does he have? Well, 4 minus 2 is 2. Do you see how that works? That is freaking sweet for simplifying those variables. And then for the B's, which has more B's, top or bottom? Well, the bottom does. So the B's are going to be in the bottom. 
How many more does he have? 3 minus 2 is 1. And you don't have to write the 1 for the exponent. You can just leave it off. It indicates an exponent of 1. All of that to the negative fifth power. So at this point, everything inside the parentheses has been simplified to lowest terms. Now, for a neat trick, it turns out that if you have a fraction raised to a negative power, in order to make that 5 positive, you can simply flip your fraction. Flipping the fraction will make the exponent outside positive. And so now we can write that to the fifth power. And at this point, the 5 can distribute to every exponent inside. And since that's an exponent raised to an exponent, that's going to indicate multiplication. So we're going to have a to the 5 times 2, b to the 5 times 1, and 25 to the 5th, because that 25 has an understood power of 1. So that's going to be 25 to the 5th. Now, as far as 25 to the 5th goes, you can leave that as 25 to the 5th, or if you want to simplify it, we could say that 25 is 5 squared to the 5th, and then we could rewrite that as 5 to the 2 times 5, which is 10, which I think I'm going to do that. A to the 10th, B to the 5th, all over 5 to the 10th. And I'm probably going to want to leave 5 to the 10th in exponential form rather than multiplying 5 times itself 10 times because that would make a huge number. So I'm thinking that this is the more simplified version of the answer, leaving the 5 to the 10th. And that's going to do it for simplifying that expression completely. And that's also going to do it for this lesson. So if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've covered so far, Please feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.